Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mail or publication. Right. Any time before the expiration of the protection order within the 90 days. Right. You can serve the respondent and you can have a court hearing. Any time in that 90 days, you can actually serve the respondent a month before the actual court hearing happens. Mm -hmm. Because it is in effect until midnight of the day of the expiration of it. Yes. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. if you dislike somebody, <laughs> why don't you serve them 90 days before expiration? Yes. So they have three months to wait. Yes. To go to court to explain to the judge why they don't want to have it reissued. If you were really mean, <clears throat> you'd serve them 90 days before expiration. Mm -hmm. You put your name on the docket to reissue the permanent protection order. Yes. And they could just sit there and think about it not expiring for 90 days. Oh, now I, I know that you don't think that way, but I'm kind of one of these mean American citizens. Yes, that if I was going to sue you, I'd give you as much time as possible before the actual date of the lawsuit. <laughs> so you could sit there and stew the whole time. Now, uh, any time within 90 days before expiration, mm -hmm. you can serve the respondent. Poop. And um, you can dock at the court hearing. Yes. And if the respondent doesn't like it, he can motion the court to have it terminated. Oh. Because any respondent can motion the court to modify or terminate the protection order. Yes. Now, I'm not going to motion the court. Yes. Considering the 41 days in 2013. Yes. Considering that it was personal service, uh, service by mail and publication, yeah, for 41 days, uh-huh, and you put my name in the newspaper, uh-huh, six different times. Now, I know how to Google my own last name. <clears throat> it was intentional harassment, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a hate crime, yes, and it adds to the hate crimes, yes, of arresting me for crimes I didn't have any involvement in, yes. The hate crimes of having me do mental health evaluations, yes. And then the uh, the threat of involuntary admitting, yes, to a mental health facility mm -hmm. so that you could administer psychotropic medication against my will. Pooch. Now, is this a forgery? Yes. Oh, well, now, if we remember correctly, yes, I wasn't in SQUIM on December 31st of 2015. Yes. And um, it's quite possible, yes. That this BUDNEPC 306 ML, yes. I don't weigh 225 pounds, yes. It says that I'm six foot two. Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you're a police officer and you think that you can't be prosecuted, but I think you can be prosecuted, yes, for the hate crime of having me arrested, yes, when you did know I wasn't there. Now, um, I would like it, yes, if you would enforce my rights as a citizen of the United States. I would like you to return custody of my sons to myself. And I would like to speak to Marilyn. Ouch. Now, um, this idea of reissuing temporary protection orders so that you can violate, yes, not just the procedural due process of the respondent, yes, but there is known as life, liberty, and property without due process. Mm -hmm. Every time you issue a temporary order for protection, uh huh, and notice of hearing, yes, where there should be a next hearing date, yes, it has to be because of what? Oh, the court finds that an emergency exists, ouch, and that a temporary order should be issued without notice to the respondent to avoid irreparable harm or injury. What is the for cause reasoning mm -hmm. for good cause shown? Why would you issue a temporary protection order? Because you have some legitimate evidence, yes, that the respondent is going to cause some sort of irreparable harm or injury, yes. When you have a protection order in place mm -hmm, that doesn't expire until the date of expiration, yes, there is no emergency. <laughs> protection order. 